G'day and welcome to my last little broadcast before I head off to the UK to Glastonbury Music Festival and the wonders that will uh, perform in front of me. I'll be sharing a lot of that with you next week and in coming weeks because uh, why should you miss out just because I'm having all the fun. Um, this week I want to talk about lots of different things, uh, the first of which is uh, to fill in. It's not something which uh, a lot of non-Jews will have a great deal of uh, a clue about, or in fact the ladies. It's very much a male-dominated element of the Jewish religion, but it is the most extraordinary ritual, which to my knowledge has been performed for thousands of years, and it's done every single morning by uh, by every Jew, other than on uh, Shabbat and High Holy Days. So why don't we talk about it more? Well, this is the most beautiful piece of cinematography relating to Tefillin that I think you'll ever see. Téphiline, l'âme, un attachement à Dieu, et ça c'est la vie. Doing everything for God, and we want to be as uh, as holy as we can be. The work is not easy; it's complicated, but we know we're doing holy things, so it's worth it. This week I came across the Sydney Jewish Museum, which commemorates the Holocaust and the story of the Jewish community here in Australia in an extremely beautiful way. But of course it's the people, not necessarily the place, which make a Jewish museum so very, very special. The Jewish Museum in Sydney uh, is very important to me. It gives me the opportunity um, to express my Jewish identity, to place uh, donate in the archives uh, many, many documents about my ancestry. I love to see already in, in this Education Resource Centre just how many options we have about how we teach the history of the Holocaust and how survivors now are able to tell and share their testimonies with artifacts that they've donated or images from the ghettos or concentration camps that they were in, um, that it's much more dynamic and engaging. Of course, there's nothing glamorous about looking at books and relics of the Holocaust, but they do strike a chord with those people visiting the museum and are truly educational. We're a major educational institution and our numbers have been growing significantly over the past 10 years. And we'd reached the stage where we needed much more space and we also needed to consolidate our facilities because we wanted to have a space that was multi-purpose. The Education Resource Centre is a really amazing space. We get to do a lot of really interesting education. We can move the walls. That means that we can educate large groups, we can do small intimate discussions. This space is important because it brings together people who want to talk about history, who want to honour the victims, who want to take opportunities to encourage critical thought. In the last few weeks, we've seen more rockets being fired from Palestinian territory into Israel. And of course, that will lead ultimately to Israel going back on the offensive to protect itself uh, from the inevitable damage that some of these rockets will cause. Which, when I discovered the United with Israel Facebook uh, site, I was delighted to see that there are so many people trying to look for ways for peace. And that's really pretty much what I believe the, the Israeli government will want to do, despite uh, the, the number of critics they have around the world. And of course, critics from London this week 
uh, in the form of Miriam Margulies, uh, Ken Loach and Mike Lee, who have signed up with others uh, to boycott the Israeli Film Festival. Now, this in a period where boycott, divest and, and sanctions campaign, better known as the BDS movement, um, is really picking up a pace all over Europe. And Lord Sachs has delivered a, a speech where he says it's making it really difficult for many Jews to support Israel. That doesn't mean that he doesn't. Uh, that's just uh, stating a pure fact. And of course, it, um, it may well for some Jews put that separation between Zionism and uh, Judaism, which really, for many of us, we don't see the, uh, the separation. We don't believe there is one. <laughs> Twenty fifteen and it's Gay Pride Day, March, whatever, in Tel Aviv. Huge crowds and well, enormous coverage basically. And what makes me even prouder is that straight people turn up. Listen to this guy. One of my favorite days in Tel Aviv. Just look now, hundreds of thousands of people are out to celebrate the LGBT community, out to show support, out to show how much we all believe in equality for everybody. And to make sure everybody knows how the United States feels about that, step right in the US and have to take a So happy Pride, everybody! Israeli government there putting out footage showing how proud they are of their own pride movement. And perhaps the rest of the world will realise how tolerant a society Israel really has become and is setting an example for many other countries in the Western world. Comedy has been a significant part of how we've got messages across in the Jewish community. And of course, that's because we've had some great Jewish comics. None other than my friend here, Simon Rakoff, my friend only because he's got O double F at the end of his surname. I am not a religious person at all. You may have guessed that. I'm what's called an agnostic. That means I don't believe in God, but I do blame him for all my problems. <laughs> But you don't have to be religious to be Jewish. It's, it's really not important to it. Um, even the word implies that, Jewish. Jewish. <laughs> Pretty tentative. Uh, <laughs> that dress new? Newish. <laughs> you a Jew? Jewish. So, uh, Jewish holidays, of course, lots of Jewish holidays, one coming up. Uh, it doesn't matter when this airs, it actually, there's one coming up. Yeah. <laughs> and the good thing is, I can tell you the story of the holiday, and it will apply no matter which Jewish holiday is coming up. <laughs> the story of this Jewish holiday is, somebody tried to kill all the Jews. They were only able to kill a large number of Jews, so we celebrate. Yeah. Yeah. It was always fun hearing the stories as a kid, and then they mopped up the blood. Sleep well. So Simon, just about getting away with taking the mickey, as an agnostic Jew can only do, out of Judaism. But how does a Jew take the mickey out of Christianity? Of course, the Bible features the most famous Jew uh, ever, uh, of course, Jesus. Uh, Jesus, probably the most successful Jew ever, really. Um, I mean, not then, but later, he did extremely well. And, um, and I really don't want to offend, but I do think about Jesus as a Jew all the time, because he's so influential. And being a Jew, I think about the Jewish characteristics and which ones Jesus probably had. And the one that comes to mind most for me, and to me a defining characteristic of the Jews I know is sarcasm. We're very sarcastic all the time, you know? And I was wondering, was Jesus sarcastic? I mean, we've never heard it. We've only read the words. Like, maybe what he really said was, yeah, the meek shall inherit the earth. <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> 